In 1982, The Clash would release their most commercially successful album of their career, Combat Rock. While the band had a lot to celebrate, they were also dealing with slow ticket sales for their shows and internal tensions. It would lead to the group's frontman disappearing for several weeks, and that's what we're going to discuss in today's video. On April 21st of 1982, The Clash's frontman Joe Strummer was doing press ahead of the band's gigs in Scotland. The interview was done in hopes of boosting lagging ticket sales in the country. The interview would be one of the last times Strummer would be heard from for nearly a month. The Clash's manager Bernie Rose had concocted an idea to help sell out the upcoming shows. He would suggest that Strummer disappear for a little while and head to Texas. The idea of the band's frontman going missing would help gain media attention to spur ticket sales, at least that's what he thought. But the idea was short-sighted as Strummer would tell Uncut Magazine, he referring to Rhodes had forgotten about the fact that we had a huge walk-up. It's something I still have. A walk-up means people who don't buy tickets for your shows up front. You might not sell a huge advance, but with a walk-up you sell out piss easy. For me, it's a real honorable thing to have. It means you've got hipsters in the crowds who don't plan things in advance. That's the crowds you want, he would say. Despite the band's big walk-up, Strummer was on board with the idea, but wasn't a fan of going to Texas. Rhodes had wanted Strummer to head down to the Lone Star State to stay with fellow musician Joey Lee. The Clash would take the musician out on tour with them when they promoted London Calling and used his name in the lyrics if music could talk. Strummer, though, wasn't a fan of traveling that far. He instead would end up taking a ferry to Paris, recalling in the documentary, The Future is Unwritten. I thought it would be a good joke if I never phoned Bernie at all. He was going to be thinking, oh, where's Joe gone? And I ran the Paris Marathon too, he'd say. The rumor was that Strummer did take part in the Paris Marathon after drinking 10 pints the night before the race. Strummer would grow a beard during this time in exile and would be joined by his girlfriend at the time, who he spent a few weeks with around the City of Lights, hitting local pubs and getting away from the turmoil of his band. Rhodes soon became concerned after not hearing from Strummer thinking that he had actually gone missing. Strummer would admit to New Musical Express, I only intended to stay for a few days, but the more days I stayed, the harder it was to come back, he'd say. The Strummer's disappearance would derail The Clash's Know Your Rights tour and ended up backfiring as a publicity stunt resulted in ticket sales coming to a full halt. People weren't going to fork over their cash for a concert that may or may not happen. Eventually, the tour dates would be either postponed or cancelled, with publications like New Musical Express covering the singer's disappearance. Fans of the band soon started scouring pubs and dance halls in Britain to find the frontman, but it would be a Dutch journalist who was in Paris on or around May 17th who supposedly spotted him at a bar. Since Strummer had only been gone for about three weeks, his appearance hadn't drastically changed. The Dutch journalist would end up making contact with The Clash's camp, who sent a close personal friend of the band and publicist Cosmo Vinyl to Paris to find Strummer. Vinyl would end up finding the frontman and upon meeting him referred to him as Fidel, a reference to Cuban leader Fidel Castro. Despite the drama surrounding his disappearance, Strummer didn't have any regrets telling New Musical Express, well, it was something I wanted to prove to myself that I was still alive. It's very much like being a robot, being in a band. Rather than go bar me and go mad, I think it's better to do what I did even for a month. I think I would have started drinking a lot on tour and maybe started becoming petulant with the audience, which isn't the sort of thing you should do, he'd say. Strummer would eventually head back home as the group was ready to play a festival in the Netherlands. To outside observers, it should have been a happy occasion to have Strummer back with The Clash, but the band was effectively done. Their gig in the Netherlands would be their final with drummer Topper Heaton, who was later fired by Strummer following the gig due to his debilitating drug addiction. After Heaton's dismissal, Strummer would bring back the group's original drummer, and The Clash continued on, but Strummer believes the band never had the magic of their earlier years saying, I don't think honest to God we ever played a good gig after that, except for one night in New Jersey. We played a good one, but I reckon that was just by the law of averages. Out of a 30 gig tour, one night was okay. You've got to say it's a fluke. It was during Strummer's disappearance that the band's latest album, Combat Rock, would be released three days before he was found by that Dutch journalist. It would prove to be the band's most commercially successful record despite the turmoil in the group. After the band concluded their tour for Combat Rock, Mick Jones would be fired by Strummer, and in 1985, The Clash would release their much maligned album, Cut the Crap. By the following year, the band was done. Strummer, for his part, would die in 2002 due to an undiagnosed heart condition at the young age of 50. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe, and we'll see you again in Rock and Ultra Stories. Take care.